Hello everyone and welcome. In this week's video I will be explaining one-way, two-way, and 1.5-way differentials. Now you've probably heard about this when describing limited slip differentials and maybe you didn't know what it means, so that's what I'm going to go over. So a two-way differential, two-way limited slip differential, means that the limited slip differential will attempt to engage the clutches with the same force and when you're both accelerating and decelerating. So when you press on the gas or you press on the brakes, it's going to try and lock up your differential. A one-way uh, limited slip differential is only going to try and lock up your differential when you're accelerating. It won't do it when you're braking. And a 1.5-way will differentiate between two-way and one-way, where you'll have more uh, engagement of the clutches, so it's going to try more to lock up the differential when you're accelerating than when you're decelerating. So, how does that work? Well, if you have not watched my video on clutch type limited slip differentials, that is what you need to watch first uh, so that you can get a grasp of what I'm showing you here on the board. So, the big deal, all it has to do with, is these pressure rings. So, these pressure rings, what happens is you've got this uh, black pinion shaft and so when you accelerate this differential housing, so this pinion rotates this direction and it rotates the differential housing like so, it's going to pull these pressure rings and they're going to come in contact with this uh, pinion shaft. So when those pressure rings push against this pinion shaft, that pinion shaft is going to be exerting a force out onto these uh, pressure rings and it's going to force these pressure rings to move outward and compress these two clutch packs, thus locking up the differential, or at least uh, adding a substantial force that the tires have to overcome before they can slip. So, when you decelerate, then the opposite's going to occur because your wheels are going to be slowing you down, so the differential is going to be kind of acting like that, and these pressure rings are going to push against the uh, pinion shaft in the other direction. So then it's going to exert a force in that direction, push these uh, pressure rings out, compress the clutch packs, and you've got your differential locked up. So this is a two-way here, and that's based on the design of these pressure rings. So like we've got going on here. So you accelerate, it pushes them out, you decelerate, it goes, the pinion shaft goes up and pushes these out so they can press. A one-way only allows the differential to lock up these clutch packs when you accelerate. So the design is like this. So when you push, or when you accelerate, you push on the gas pedal, and that pinion shaft comes back, it pushes these two plates out, once again locks up your differential. When you decelerate, when you slam on the brakes, it pushes up against a flat surface. So that doesn't cause these to go out, it just pushes up against them. Nothing happens, so these are left to freely rotate. Now why would you want that? Well, if you are driving and you're going around a corner and you're slamming on the brakes and you want to be able to have one tire go at a different speed than the other tire, then that's what this is allowing to do. It's basically keeping your wheels as an open differential so as you turn, one tire goes uh, slightly quicker than the other tire and you don't interfere with something like ABS. So if you locked up your tires, then a two-way would interfere with that where a one-way would not. Now what is the advantage of a two-way over a one-way? Well, if you are coming to a stop and say you're coming to a straight stop and there is a patch of ice or something like that on one side of your vehicle, well when you slow down it's going to lock up this clutch pack. So instead of your one tire slipping on that ice, it will be forced to rotate at the same speed as the tire that's on the pavement, so it won't allow it to slip on the ice. Or, not slip, but become stationary, lock up, so you'd have one tire not moving and one tire rotating. So it keeps it rotating. Uh, if you were to be going straight, and they both rotate at the speed of the highest moving one, I guess you would say, rather than the lowest moving one when you're accelerating. So a 1.5 way is kind of the best of both worlds, where you have a various uh, proportion that... So when you accelerate, you have one force, um, and you're going to lock them up a bit more than when you decelerate. So how does that work? Well, you just use differing angles in these pressure rings. So, 
let's say you're accelerating. Well, you've got this kind of more narrow angle here, and so that's going to create, or not, yes, you've got a more narrow angle here, so the normal force against that is going to be perpendicular to it, and you can see the x force here is greater than the y force. So you're going to be pushing a, a large amount of that force of this pinion shaft pushing against this goes into compressing these clutch packs by pushing out these pressure rings. On the reverse side, you've got a very uh, kind of, not a very high uh, angle here that you're going to be pushing the pinion shaft against when you decelerate. So when you slam on the brakes and that pinion shaft pushes against this, it's not very angled. It's not like this where it's going to have a huge vertical force or horizontal force. It's going to have a greater vertical force. So as you can see here, the normal force, the force that this is pushing against this um, pressure ring, in the y is much greater than the x, where this is different, where when you accelerate, the x is greater than the y. And so that allows, so it acts kind of like a one-way, but also kind of like a two-way, in that you have really strong lockup, or not strong, I don't want to say lockup, because it doesn't necessarily mean they're locked, but that's what it's trying to make the differential act like. It's trying to make it act like a lock differential where you can transfer torque. So there's a greater force to overcome when you're accelerating for one tire to break free than when you're decelerating for one tire to come to a stop so that you reduce the likelihood of having one tire stop when you're braking and you don't have ABS.